there supposedly was only 67 of these Revcons made. He had owned the rig for 20 years, and you could just see his eyes light up that this rig was gonna get a, a second life. Hey, my name's JP Smith. I wanna show you around my 1993 Revcon 4x4 Trailblazer RV. Let's check it out. So now we're looking back at the Revcon. This is the kitchen and, and desk areas right over here. This is where I spend a lot of my day working, um, trying to get uh, things planned and, and festivals promoted. I couldn't exist without the second monitor. This thing is great and it's on a swing arm. So if my girlfriend and I are sitting here having dinner, you can just push that off to the side. Otherwise, while you're working, it goes right there above the, the laptop. Uh, there's storage underneath one of the, um, the dinette seats. The other one is part of the black tank that comes from the toilet. So that's what's under, under there. And then overhead, these beautiful cabinets. The kitchen is one of the things that I've updated a little bit. Uh, when it came, it had a two burner propane stove that took up a lot of space. It was 30 years old. It needed some, some help. So I took out the countertop, reused the sink, but put in this butcher block countertop and went to an induction cooktop. I've got plenty of power, so why not just use the electricity and the sun to make uh, your food? So between the induction cooktop, the air fryer, and uh, microwave, usually can get whatever I need made, no problem. I've got a three-way fridge, so it works on electric, propane, and DC power when you're driving. There's a few triggers in there. It'll automatically switch from propane over to electricity, use that, and then when the sun goes down later in the day, it'll automatically switch back to propane. That way, again, you save that electricity when you're not using it. The greatest thing I added to the kitchen, and this, this may seem silly, but I put in a cup washer, like you'll see at a bar, and it's just great for uh, when you have a dirty cup, Instead of spinning all that water, cleaning out the inside, you just take it, tap it on there, washes out. There you go, set it out to dry. Uses almost no water to clean the inside of, of the cups. In continuing with my modern modernization, here is the control panel, 30 years old. It's got the original gold, but uh, I, I've updated it. I didn't need the, the telephone jack anymore, for instance. But what I've got is the smart switches that will press the buttons for me in the morning to get my day going. So for instance, I can say, Alexa, turn on the water heater. And this little switch over here will come out, press the button for me and turn on the water heater. I've uh, got it set up so that uh, in the morning, one word will trigger the water heater, the water pump, and even open up the shade in the back and let that morning sun in. This is the front of the Revcon. And this is my mostly storage and a little bit of the secondary kitchen. There is a cab over, over the top, and I use that for storage. I found the bins are the easiest because if I do have somebody who's coming to stay with me, I can take those in, put them outside. They're out of the way, they're secure. When I originally got the Revcon, it had four seats. I took out the back two seats and uh, just used that for store, extra storage. Eventually, I plan to build this up a little bit nicer and make it uh, a little more useful space. But in the meantime, it, it holds quite a bit of stuff. Over here on this side, I've got my secondary kitchen, some of the more important things. So I don't have an oven in here. I've got an air fryer. I absolutely love this thing. Uh, I've got a kettle. My girlfriend likes hot tea in the morning. I'm a coffee drinker, so I got my coffee pot. And then this, I can't live without. This is my ice maker. And it's a big boy, it's a beast, but it makes that wonderful nugget ice, like Sonic, the real crunchy ice. I absolutely love that. And then like most things in this Revcon, I've turned this 30 year old rig into something a little more modern by using a smart speaker and smart plugs. So in the morning, I can tell the smart speaker to wake up and make us coffee and tea. And she'll turn on the coffee pot, turn on the tea maker. Um, in the morning, she turns on the ice maker automatically because it makes a little bit of noise. So we don't like to let it run through the night. Everything's hooked up. And then if I'm leaving, I can simply tell her to shut down everything. It's a great power saving mode that just shuts off everything you won't need while you're away out for a hike or going to get groceries or something. And yeah, it saves you a lot of the wasted power that, uh, that would just be going if you were around. I've been a nomad for 20 
23, 24 years. The first uh, dozen or so years, I backpacked around the world in my non-work time, which was about seven or eight months a year. I traveled, uh, been to 75, almost 80 countries at this point. And then I traded the backpack when I was in my early 30s for a motorcycle. And I traveled on a motorcycle for about five or six years, did a couple of epic trips, one of them all the way down to the bottom of South America to Argentina from uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. And then after being completely nomadic for about 15 years, I decided I wanted to own a few things, nothing, nothing much, but something. And so I decided RV life was for me. So I bought my first RV when I was 35 and uh, I've been on the road about 10 years now. I've owned five RVs in 10 years. And then about three years ago, my buddy Kevin, he and his wife, Emma, bought a Revcon just like this. And as soon as I saw it, I thought that thing's a beast. It looks so cool and it can get you where we wanna go. And uh, I found the Revcon about a year ago and it's quite an interesting story. Since I'd first seen one, I'd been following the hashtag Revcon on Instagram and a new picture of the Revcon popped up. And I said, well, I don't think I've seen that one before. And I zoomed in on it and noticed that there was a for sale sign in the window. And I thought that's crazy. The guy that posted the picture had no other pictures of a Revcon. So I messaged him and asked him where he'd seen this and he told me and he sent me the original photo so that I could zoom in and read the sign that was on the window and copy the number down from that picture. I called the guy, uh, the phone number, and it turns out it was a wonderful man. He's uh, now 80 years old and he had been thinking about selling the Revcon for a while and just put a for sale sign on it and drove it to the end of his street. and. Uh, somebody passing by saw it and took a picture of it and that's how I found out about it. So this is the back bedroom and when, the, when I originally got the Revcon about a year ago this was a dinette that would comfortably seat eight or ten people but it meant that you had to make it down into a bed every night or you had to sleep in the cab over, which is not comfortable for two people for a long period of time. Um, at some point in its history, somebody had added seat belts around here so that you could take eight people in the dinette out for a ride legally, but I never intended to have that many people in here. And so it's a lot easier just to convert this into a full-time queen bed. And that's what it is, it's a queen bed, but it's also become my internet and my entertainment center. So I got a, a TV here that's on a, on a swivel arm. Next to it, I got my Starlink and I couldn't live without the Starlink now. It's made life so much easier for those of us who work uh, and live on the road. And again, like almost everything in here, I've got it on a smart outlet so that the Starlink can shut off uh, when I leave the, the rig if I want to, or sometimes I'll just set a timer so it shuts off at night while I'm sleeping just to save a little bit of power overnight. Under the bed is the, is the heart and soul. I've got a 45 gallon freshwater tank. Uh, again, usually enough for about 10 days to two weeks, depending on, our, on where we are. And then I've got two 170 amp hour lithium batteries and those are running at 24 volts. So it's equivalent to about 680 amp hours of lithium on there. And that's all going through a GrowWatt solar charge controller, which is a combination inverter and charge controller. That's a 3000 watt PureSign inverter. Plenty of power to run even the air fryer, the ice maker, and the induction cooktop all at the same time. Uh, if I'm running the mini split, then I might uh, turn that off for a minute while I'm running the air fryer and the induction cooktop. The mini split is also my heat. It's an electric heater as well. So cools and heats and uses just that lithium power. In the summer months, there's enough solar coming in that I can run the air conditioning and still be putting about 50% of the solar coming in into the battery bank. So I've got 2,220 watts of solar that's on six panels on the roof that's built on a custom um, iron ridge deck that covers the entire roof. Over here, I've got my closet. It's a bit of a mess, but uh, it's enough for, for uh, me and <laughs> my girlfriend has a few things in there as well. So lots of storage in the closet space. And then there's also four cabinets overhead that is kind of just extra catch all for those things you don't need all the time. At the foot of the bed, you've got your bathroom sink with just a regular uh, a sink storage underneath. The Revcon has a small but adequate wet bath. It's got a 
25 or 30 gallon black tank and a normal RV style toilet and then uh, a low flow shower head that I put in there. So um, if it's just me, I can stay two weeks on the 45 gallon water tank and that's showering almost every day. But yeah, it's a uh, totally adequate. I put in a new vent fan in here to replace the 30 year old one that uh, wasn't quite working well and uh, plenty of room for me to shower and, and uh, yeah, do what you need to do. Living nomadically in an RV or a, a van or a box truck or a schoolie, whatever it is, you find awesome people. You really, it's a great sense of community. I truly believe that I've got better friends living on the road than I would living in any city in, in the world or in America. These are people that you, you, you might not see them every week, but you call them up and you say, hey, I'm gonna be near Phoenix, or I'm gonna be around Joshua Tree, or I'm gonna be up in Montana the second week of June. Come and meet us up there. And you camp next to them, you, you have uh, potlucks, you share meals, you play games, go for hikes, do all those things, and you're, you're living right there with all your belongings and all your, your, your life. And then you separate and you go a different direction. Living on the road is a great sense of community. But I will tell you, it's, it's not all flowers. Um, you know, vehicles break down, um, the weather can be bad for several days. I love my solar, but if you've got lots of clouds, then maybe you're leaving that, uh, that beautiful boondocking spot and having to go to an RV park for a night or two um, and plug in to charge up those batteries. But the good definitely outweighs the bad. And if you're thinking about it, I tell people you're never gonna, if you wait to know all the answers, you'll never do anything. Just get out there and do it. So the inside of the Revcon is like a standard RV, but the outside's what really makes this thing special. <laughs> Thanks to my friends Sawhill and Maggie. <laughs> Thanks for the ride, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this thing was built in 1993 on a Ford F-350 chassis. It's, it's a gas engine. Most of them were built with gas. A few at the very end were built with diesel, but it's on a 460. And what really makes this RV unique is the fact that it's four wheel drive with six wheels. The front four tires are what give it the power. The rear one is just for traction and support. There's a few different numbers thrown out about how many of these were made, but what we know is that it was made between 1993 and 1999. And the number that I hear oftentimes is 67. This one's number 13 of 67. My main source of income and, and my passion is Chasm Fest. It's a festival that my girlfriend and I started, camping, health, art, sports, and music, and it really caters to the nomadic community, um, as well as people who are aspirational about getting the, to the nomad life. You know, come out in a tent, see how other people are living, tour all the rigs, and then maybe come back the next year in your own vehicle and, and join us. You know, at the last one we did, we had seven different bands. We had yoga, we had meditation, we had goat yoga, we had mountain biking, we had uh, volleyball and kickball, we had art uh, displays, people, people showing you how to make different types of arts. Uh, we had vendors who were selling their own wares. It's really just a, a, a small, fun festival vibe, but with other fellow travelers and people who are thinking about getting on the road and just a, a, a great, safe, fun event. Just check the website, chasmfest.com, see where the next one is. Maybe we're gonna be near you. You can also follow at chasmfest on Instagram or all the social things. Um, or if you wanna just follow along with my personal journey, you can follow me at travelingwithjp. So I hope you've enjoyed the uh, tour of this off-road RV. Uh, it, it is a little bit different and definitely get some, some looks when I'm going down the road or when I stop for gas. But yeah, come out to Chasm Fest. I'll give you a tour and uh, meet some new awesome people around the, the campfire. <laughs>